with these storms we're tracking, safety is going to be that number one concern. And as I mentioned, flash flooding, those severe thunderstorms, and blowing dust are all on the table. So when you're driving and it starts to flood, remember to turn around, don't drown. Also, if you're driving and that blowing dust starts to pick up, pull aside, stay alive, and finally, when thunder roars, stay indoors. We all know the weather can change by the minute, so please be sure to stick with your news for Tucson Storm Tracker 4 weather team, and we'll have the latest. Isabel, what do we know so far? Robbie, this crash reportedly happened six hours ago, but as you can see behind me, it is still a very active scene here on West Aravaca Road. Both Pima County Sheriff's Department officers and state troopers are busy clearing the scene as well as investigating what had happened. I will take a step aside so you can get a better look at the scene. Well, Matt, I can tell you that at least here in Tucson, things are looking pretty wet. And a lot of people do like to joke that the Tucson International Airport never sees any rain, but it is actually one of our wettest spots so far this month soon. As we continue into the second half of our monsoon 2024, be sure to stick around because it could be another wet, very wet monsoon, potentially hitting the records once again. Your storm tracker for weather team will be keeping a close eye on it, so be sure to stick around. Isabella, what are you finding out out there? Well, Monica, we do know that both the driver of the school bus and the sedan were taken to the hospital and that the driver of the sedan has life-threatening injuries. In terms of the incident itself, I just spoke to the superintendent of the Sayarita School District just a few minutes ago, and he tells me they are taking this incident very seriously as both support and safety are their main priorities. And with this yet, we could see more tomorrow, isn't that right? That's right, Matt. And just as you mentioned, it was a pretty active day. And earlier today, we did see a round of some storms that packed a punch. But for how things are looking right now here in Midtown Tucson, as you can see, looking at the sky, things have clouded over. But the good news is there is still almost two months left of our 2024 monsoon. So there's still time for those drier places to catch up with some more rainfall. That is what we like to call our monsoon report card. I'll send it back to you. It's been a very wet start so far to our monsoon. 2024 and with exactly 50 days left of the monsoon there is still plenty of time to continue to add to those rain totals so where do we stand today remember turn around don't drown when thunder roars go indoors and of course when the blowing dust picks up and you're driving pull aside stay alive but as we all know the weather changes by the minute so please be sure to stick with your news for tucson storm tracker 4 weather team and we'll have everything you need to know Sean, Monica, well, I can tell you that at least here in Midtown Tucson, things have since calmed down after an afternoon of some storms. But just as Matt mentioned, those storms we saw earlier today packed a punch. Some places such as Vail saw nearly an inch of rain. Now, Amber Cool with the Arizona College of Nursing says there is a nationwide lag in enrollment for nursing schools. So you can imagine why donations such as this one can help these nurses graduate and hopefully land in hospitals right here in Pima County. Let's send things over to News for Tucson's Isabella Fredrickson joining us now with the latest on this crash. Monica, I'm joining you live along Aviation Highway where two separate car collisions have occurred in the last 24 hours. Now, I spoke to the Pima County Sheriff's Department, and while details are limited at this time, we do know that the previously closed roads have since reopened. That first crash is still under investigation, so details are limited at this time, but we will continue to let you know the latest as we learn more. Reporting live from the southeast side, Isabella Fredrickson, News for Tucson. News for Tucson's Isabella Fredrickson joining us live from the west side with reaction to these crimes. Isabella. Monica, after a handful of shootings and other crimes all happening over the past few days, I can tell you that people are concerned, from locals to officials. It's been a very busy week for crime across the Metro Tucson area. Just in the last week, five shootings were reported, including a Pima County deputy being shot. A handful of these crimes occurred in the Midvale area. I spoke to residents like Rafael Perez. He, like many in the neighborhood, have children. He says he doesn't like what he's been seeing lately. It's crazy. I mean, what's, what's it coming to? You know, the sad thing is I have to arm myself just to make sure that, you know, we're safe. You know, I got, I got kids. I have people I care about. And I just, I, I can't fathom the thought. Robert Marquez expressed a similar thought. You know, I have children, so I'm very concerned, you know, of when they come and fill up their cars, 
or when they go to work or when they're on their way home. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely a big concern. I caught up with City Councilman Paul Cunningham. He says he shares their feelings, but also applauds police on how they have been responding to the situation. I'm super concerned. I think that it, it, it's something where the community needs to feel safe. I can't blame anybody for having some alarm bells rain, rained off because, man, the hits kept coming last week. And I really want to hand it to our, our uh, police department and our officers who, who took each one and addressed each one and was working their investigation. So and we're going to make this community as safe as we can. With the people I spoke with today, they both informed me on how they will be moving forward, considering the recent events. You know, if I see someone in uh, trouble, I'm going to protect them as well. I mean, it's not just me and my family. You know, I consider everyone that I meet an extended family. I hate to say this, but I think more citizens like myself need to be armed. You know, and I'm not that violent guy. So, Yeah, I definitely will be talking to my children today. Steps that they could take in order to make sure that they're not in harm's way, you know. Lock the doors when you, when you come to the store, you know. If you're going to leave somebody in the car, you know, make sure the doors are locked. Now, if you have any information regarding any of these events, please be sure to call 88 Crime. Reporting live on the west side, Isabella Fredrickson, News for Tucson. News for Tucson's Isabella Fredrickson joins us live outside the university with more and quite a new development on this as well, Isabella. Sean, police have arrested Henry Yanez III and have issued him an order banning him from all University of Arizona properties. This news was welcomed by students as some were nervous when a suspect was still on the loose. It was on Saturday when students first learned that UAPD was looking for this guy, now identified as Henry Yanez III. It was in regards to a stalking incident which police say happened Saturday afternoon. Yeah, I'm definitely surprised it's during the day. I feel like most of the time it's, you know, 3 a.m. as opposed to 3 p.m. So that definitely is a, is a surprise. A woman called police saying a man tried to lure her into his car by offering her a ride. She refused and went to a nearby business for safety. On Sunday, police say they got a call from another woman who says she was groped. But in this case, allegedly the suspect told the victim his name was Henry. Police later identified Yanez as the person responsible for both incidents. Oh, it's, it's very scary, you know, that this is happening and stuff and that people can't really feel safe, you know, just walking around, you know. A criminal record search shows Yanez was arrested for trying to lure two students into his vehicle in 2015, where he was charged with one count of misdemeanor assault. Most students come back to school in a few weeks, and students like Susan says they're taking all safety precautions. For this specific incident and for the previous ones, I'm always more aware when I'm out on the street. I don't have ever both headphones in. Um, I carry my pepper spray with me everywhere I go, um, and I always hold it in my hand. Sometimes if I don't have a pepper spray, I'll hold my keys out like this. But just being more cautious um, and understanding that this is not a one-time occurrence. This has happened multiple times over the past year. We will continue to follow this story as it develops. Reporting live in Midtown, Isabella Fredrickson, News 4, Tucson. News 4, Tucson's Isabella Fredrickson joins us live right now from Midtown with some self-defense tips. Isabella. Hello, Angelique. I'm here live at Tucson Rising Phoenix Fitness and Self-Defense. I'm here with Miss Victoria. She is the director of the Women's Self-Defense, and she teaches a free donations-based women's self-defense class. I came here earlier, and her and I talked about ways you can keep yourself safe and defend yourself if you get into a situation. Now, a big important thing to know is to be situationally aware. That means to be fully aware of your surroundings as you're walking when you're out. That means not looking at your phone when you're out in public walking if you have music in your ears not to have that too loud because again that interrupts you from knowing what's completely going on around you but if you do find yourself in a struggle miss victoria does have some tips you're going to want to follow i'm going to give the attention to her now and she'll use me as an example but what are those main tips you want to focus on if you are in struggle yep main thing Go for what we call weak points on the body. Weak points, think of them as the great equalizers on the body where it doesn't matter how big or how strong your attacker is, you can still do damage. So eyes, number one weak point, right? Go for the eyes, fingers in the eyeballs. I don't care how big 
or how jacked you are, you start sticking a thumb or a finger in someone's eyes, they're usually gonna do something like this and if they have you, they might let go. Other weak points, the ear. I can box the ear, I can grab it, rip it. If they're super close up to you, bite the ear. There are no rules in self-defense. The nose, smash down on it, up under the nose, up under the chin, the temple, the jaw, smash the collarbone, attack the throat. If they can't breathe, they can't fight. We all know about groin strikes. Don't make it your only strike, but that's available. And then the last tip we should know with that very last thing, so you do have to wrap up now. Don't stop fighting. If you're breathing, you're fighting, just keep going. All right. Well, you heard it from the master herself. We're reporting live in Midtown. Isabella Fredrickson, News 4, Tucson.